What's up guys, welcome back to IT Security Labs and in this video I'm going to show you how to visualize your PFSense firewall logs all the way into Grafana and end up with graphs that look like what I have here. What you're looking at is are the graphs from my logs that I'm visualizing in PFSense. As you know, the logs are just text and sometimes they are tedious to go through and it will be easy to just visualize them and see what's going on in your firewall. That's what I have here. I can easily tell the firewall events. I have a baseline here. I know that my lab has 100 or less for the most part. So if I see 10,000 here at any given time, I'll be alarmed and I'll want to know why that is happening. Same as the interface, it's normal that my LAN has more traffic than my WAN. That is uh, also normal for me to see that the top destination port is 443. My geolocation tells me where my traffic is coming from. And since this is my lab and I'm not really connected to the internet that much, I'm only using um, the United States for now. So that's another one. And of course I can see which parts of my logs are the most. Right now my firewall logs are the most uh, coming in. Top 10 IP addresses, you can see right there. Top test, top 10 destinations and the protocol. Right now I have ICMP, so I was investigating why I have so much ICMP. My one is part of my uh, lab, which is also part of my home LAN. That's why ICMP is getting blocked uh, by this firewall. So I know that. I can see these logs in real time and I can see the cities where this traffic is coming from. So this is our... Uh, something that is very important for my lab and I like to be able to set it up. Now that we know what this is, how did I set it up? I started by following this uh, guide by OPC40772. He is the original person that came up with this idea. It's not my idea and all the credit goes to them. Then after that, uh, Greylog has been updated. As you can see, this was for 2.5. Now we're at 3.1. So this doesn't work anymore. If, and if you follow, you might run into issues. DevOps Tales did a great job as well, updated our content packs for Greylock 3. So I really have to give him uh, credit for that. Then uh, I came in and I'm also, I made a, just a tiny change. And also I'm going to show you so that it's easy for you to follow the instructions. And also I'll give you some tips on how to make this work. That was all the housekeeping that I needed to do. After this, uh, Let's just go ahead and start the installation. The first thing that you're going to need is a working Greylog server. I did show you how to install Greylog on my YouTube channel. So you should have a working Greylog system right now that is actually uh, ready to receive logs. And if you don't have a working Greylog server, please follow the instructions in a video that I'll link in the description. It's very simple. It should not take you too long. I'm using SendOS and everything in here is free. So once you have a working Greylock server, you can come back and actually start following the instructions and you should be good after this. The first thing that you're going to notice when you install Greylock is you don't have anything in there. You don't have any streams. You don't have any data coming in. It's just gray log as you can see zero in zero out so you want to make sure that you tell your pfsense firewall to send the logs to gray log that's the first thing so you go to your syst uh, status system logs you should be able to see your logs here go to settings in your uh, pfsense scroll all the way check enable remote logging Remote log servers, you want to specify the IP address of your gray log server. In this case, I'm using 192.168.5.51, which is the same as this one. And then after that, you want to specify a port. I'm using 5143. If you use lower port like 514, you get an error. You just have to allow the ports. Otherwise, use higher ports like I'm doing here. 5143 check everything or you can just choose firewall events if you want i'm doing everything and do save once you apply here go to your gray log and your gray log should 
not have anything so go to system inputs and you want to select syslog udp was uh that's what i'm using here launch input i'll call this pf sense logs the node i only have one and my port is 5143 that i specified in pf sense it has to match here and i leave everything to default and save so if i give this a minute as you can see i'm beginning to receive messages right away in and out so you now have your messages uh pfsense logs coming from pfsense into gray log very simple and straightforward then after that do a show received messages to verify that you're getting these logs and sure enough there they are but as you will notice you don't have a lot of uh, fields here you're not parsing these logs they're just coming in raw as you can see in real time and you're not doing anything to these logs we want to end up with these logs looking like this with these fields here we want to break down every message into an ip address uh, source destination port and all that information even geolocation we want to break those logs into those fields so when we can send them to grafana we can grab data as it is so these raw logs are not really helpful for us right now but as you can see they're coming i mean this is great i just wanted to add that if you end up with your inputs in and you don't get any data so you don't see these numbers here changing make sure to go to your server your gray log server and open up the port that you're sending to so for example i'm using uh port 514 so you go ahead and run file cmd add port 514 if you're running firewall or if you're on tcp udp just do add port udp so this is on sendos running vsphere here so that's uh what you need to do just in case you get stuck there because something very simple that a lot of people find uh getting stressed out about so add the port and you'll be good so once we have the logs flowing in and we verified that the logs are in there we need to do some housekeeping there is a these logs are coming in gray log and they're being saved in elast elastic search and elastic search is very complicated for a lot of people but there's a very nice tool that you can use to manipulate elastic search so we can see these logs and break them down into different fields and that tool is called cerebro this little guy here that's what we need to install i'll show you how to use it and it will make your life way easy if you use it to um, manage your elastic search the only trouble is it runs on port 9000 by default there's a way to change it i don't know how so the easiest way for me is to change gray log to stop listening on port 9000 so i'm going to put my gray log to listen on port 9400 uh, that way when i install cerebro which is this little tool it can listen on this port and i don't have to worry about uh changing that little guy's uh cerebro's uh ports so the first thing that we need to do before we install cerebro is let's change our gray log quickly uh in order for us to change the gray log configuration so gray log can listen on a different port we edit the gray log config file and in here you want to search for http i think it's underscore bind so what we're doing is i'm telling my gray log server that we're no longer listening on port 9000 but instead we want to listen on port 9400 then we escape right quit then from there let's just restart gray log and once we restart gray log we should now come back in gray log at port 9400 but if you're running a firewall you also need to make sure that that port is open so let's go ahead and uh, open port 9400 here because i have a firewall running so you do that and 9400 then we reload the firewall
This ensures that we can actually now access our gray log on port 9400. And when we come back, we put our IP address at port 9400 and sure enough, our gray log web interface is loading. So we have changed our gray log from 9600 to 9400. And then uh, let's go ahead and sign in, admin. Let's go and check our inputs one more time. Make sure that everything is still working. As you can see, we are receiving messages. So once, once Greylog is changed to port 9400, the next thing that we need to do is install this little tool that we can use to manage Elasticsearch. With Elasticsearch, we're going to index our logs, we're going to parse them and also create different fields. So that's why we need this little tool called Cerebro. And to install it, we just uh, run this command, wget and the link to the installation file for Cerebro. As you can see, that shouldn't take too long. Once the download is done, yum install, local install Cerebro. I'll have these commands for you. So now that Cerebro is uh, installed, if we go to our IP address at port 9000, we should now be able to access our Elasticsearch in no time. So quick note here, if you are running on CentOS and you installed Cerebro and you try to access it on the IP address at port 9000, it will give you this error. So what you need to do is, I found a quick solution, which is probably not the surface, this is the error that you you get and this person has a solution for us what we just need to do is run this command on our server and cerebro should run so that's a quick uh, tip for you for watching this video because otherwise you spend hours and hours try and make it work and it will not work so just run that command after that cerebro should work so as you can see after running that command so this is the, i have a link to fixing this it's just a permissions thing if you know how to do it better let me know in the comments below but uh that's what you do so now we can access from 51 at port 9000 local host 9200 this will connect to a local elastic search um instance and as you can see we are connected so that's cerebro for you so that's the uh, once your cerebro is installed next we want to uh, go ahead and create an index in our gray log server so what we're doing is now that we're getting the logs in here you want to go to system indices and you want to create an index set like that so once you, you are, you are here, you want to name it pfsense-logs and give it a description. I leave most of these to their defaults. Everything should still work in the default and hit save. And once you save, you should have a pfsense-logs index right here. But this is not the end. And our instructions will tell us that after creating the index, we need to go and make sure that we see it in Cerebro. That's why we installed it. And sure enough, if we go to our Cerebro server, we we'll see pfsense-0. You should see this uh, after creating your index and having a successful index. So that's what you should see. After that, we need to uh, download all the data from uh, this Git, Git uh, location. You can copy some from mine or from debuff tails. Either way, it will work. So on your server, just go ahead and copy and paste git clone, and you, you do that. I already downloaded mine, so if you do an ls here, you should see that I have uh, this pfsense dash gray log. So let's change directory directory to it. And if we do an ls here, we have all the data. We have the content packs, the dashboards, and everything. Uh, right now we just want we're interested in this service port names so let's uh, do a cd to it and in here we have a text file that contains 
Zev is port names and numbers. This one, we want to copy this port uh, file to our location, which is our SC Greylog server. So by just doing is copy the name of the file to SC Greylog server. So I already did that, but run this command and you should uh, get this file to the correct location. So if I change my direction, my directory to etc Greylog server, you want to make sure that after you run the copy command, you have this file in here. So that's what this part of the instruction says. Then after that, we are ready to download and install our content pack. So our content pack allows us to not do much configuration in Greylog because we, just in case you don't know uh, a lot about Greylog. So if you go to your inputs, we have what we call extractors and these extractors are mostly grok filters are what allows us to break down the messages that we're getting into different fields so we get those extractors from a content pack that someone already made for us and if you go to this github location and if you go to the pfsense content pack location if you're using Greylog 3 open the Greylog 3 you only have this and from here, what I do is I click raw, then right click and do a save as. I save it to my desktop with that name and save. Go to gray log and system inputs, actually system content packs, upload and choose file and I saved mine to the desktop and ju then just do three there we go and open and upload hit upload after you hit upload you have a content pack here it will not be installed so hit install and once you hit install complete the installation process and it should be successful and once it's installed, it should tell you that it's installed and this is the status. So that's how we install the content pack. And that's um, this other part right here that talks about uploading a content pack. Then from there, we need to go to our streams. Our content pack created a PFSense logs stream. So what happens is data gets into gray log. Then uh, we get the data from our input into a stream. Then from a stream, we get it in, into Elasticsearch, then we index it. So if we go to our gray log, go to streams, this PFSense stream should be there for you. It, it should already be created. And what I do is go to manage rules and you want to make sure that uh, you have this rule right here, field source contain filter log. So what this filter log term we just pick up only firewall logs from PFSense. So that's what uh, we are doing here. So we're gra grabbing that message. And when you're done, just hit done. If you don't have the rule for whatever reason, just do an add stream rule and source and just match this rule that I just showed you. And once you're done with your st stream, let's go ahead and also edit this stream. We need to tell this stream which index set to use. And in this case, you, you, you go to this drop down and pick, pick your PFSense dash log uh, index set that we created earlier and save. So now you should start seeing a bunch of messages coming in and there should be a number right here changing if you have logs flowing in. Then from there, let's go back to our instructions. From there, you want to go to Cerebral, which is why we installed Cerebral area. And in Cerebral, you want to go to uh, More Index Template. So let's go to our Cerebral, More Index Templates. And you want to name this one pfsense-custom. And go back to our GitHub, which I will link down below. Go to Elasticsearch PFSense custom template and you want to choose this one, ES6, 
and copy this whole template. Pretty sure there's a better way to highlight this, but as you can tell, I'm pretty new to this. So copy that and go back to your gray log, um, cerebral, remove this and paste. Once you paste it, everything should be good. Hit update. I did make some a slight change here because there was a, I was getting some errors. So copy the one from my GitHub and yours should work. I, it took a little bit back and forth customization for mine to work, especially the geolocation. So just hit update. And once you update it, the next thing that go back to your gray log and run system control stop gray log server. So once you stop gray log, you want to come here and select this index, the PFSense one that was created and delete it. Confirm that you deleted it. And that's where we were with our instructions. And after that, you can go ahead and start your Greylock server by just running the same system control. Start. And Greylock server should load right now. Once you restart Greylog and it's up and running, if you go back to Cerebral, you should see a new index created. And if you go here and do a show mappings, you should see that it's the same template that we, we just created that's being applied to these indices. So that's very important. And after that, go back to your Greylog and if you go to your streams, PFSense, you notice that you might not see anything here because there is a time difference. This uh, gray log handles logs in some uh, this standard time zone. So if you are like me, your logs might be an hour behind. So just choose such past two hours, or you can search all logs, all messages. And the most important thing here to note is, as you can see now on the left, we are getting a lot of fields. And we can actually see what the destination IP is by just checking that box. You can tell, and you can see all these um, different fields. So now our data is being parsed and we're breaking it down into different fields. So if you open one log now, you can see that this is all the data that we're getting from this log. Once we verify that our messages are coming in, in gray log, the next thing that we need to do is fix this time problem. So you want to make sure that you have your real time time zone set up for these logs so that when you display them in Grafana, they show your actual time zone, not the default system time that comes with this. And to do that, we go to system. And if you go to your pipelines, our content pack should have created this pipeline. But if you do a manage rules, Let's open it. And under the pipeline, you should see that there is a rule here that's already created for you. Just open it up and you want to adjust this time. The one that I have here is America, Chicago. You, you, you want to change this time zone to your own time zone. So your logs are accurate. This is how you fix the time issue. And after that, just hit save. And this should already be created for you. So that's this part right here then of course after this everything is ready to be shipped to grafana and this is where the fun actually gets more exciting so go to go ahead and uh, install grafana if you haven't i have a video uh how to install grafana in in docker in 10 minutes this video will show you exactly how to install uh docker grafana it will literally take you less than 10 minutes if you have a working send os or ubuntu system just follow these instructions on how to install Grafana. It's very simple. Let me know if you need help uh, installing Grafana or if you run into any issues. 
So once you're done installing your Grafana, go ahead and uh, go to your sign in to Grafana. Then uh, go to configuration, data sources. And in here, you want to add a data source. And you can name this uh, whatever you want. And this is what uh, mine looks like. I named it PFSense Gray Log. Type is Elasticsearch. And your, your URL for your um, Greylog server at port 9200. After the URL, uh, the other part that we need to make sure is uh, the index name should be pfsense underscore star and real time stamp. You want the real time stamp so that your time is actually correct, like I showed you earlier how to fix it. After that, do a save and test. It should say index. Okay. Then if everything works well, you can go to your here to your dashboards and do an import. Then right here you just go back to our GitHub location. So just go to GitHub and copy this dashboard here. And once you copy all this JSON uh, text, go back to Grafana and paste it. And if it's in there correctly, if you do uh, say load, you will not get this error. But I already have a graph like this, so let me change that. Then you can name it pfsense firewall logs. I'm just going to call this two and import. I mean, when you import it, this is what it looks like. It automatically comes up with all the data, and you should now have your logs flowing in. And as you can see, it's that simple. So that's how you get your PFSense gray log logs into Grafana. So if there's any questions, make sure to leave me a comment below. I'll be happy to help you. If you really like this content, please support my channel by subscribing and liking this video. That helps uh, with the algorithm. So please, um, if you do find value in this content, subscribe and like this video. Otherwise, this is how you create these graphs from your PFS and firewall logs. If there is any questions about the Grafana part that we didn't go in depth, let me know. Otherwise, follow this video right here. It should set you up in the right direction like that. So this is the data that we get after a while, and this should be fun. So like I said, it's very simple. If you have any issues, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.